Hey, how's everyone doing? Zero here, and for today's video, I want to teach you guys as much as I can about Hero. Ever since he was released, I've been playing him a lot, and I want to share all the information I have with him so then you guys can learn him as fast as possible or at least learn a couple things that you didn't know about him. Now, with that said, let's start off with the basics. Uh, Hero as a character plays a little bit differently than most sword characters. Most sword characters don't tend to have heavy projectiles or just, you know, a whole many of special moves. So from the get-go, he plays very unique compared to, say, Marth or Lucina, which means that in a lot of scenarios, you're not going to be relying just on sword attacks but also on your specials and projectiles. So not every scenario is going to be about outraging your opponent, but also about using completely different attacks. But let's just start off very simple. I want to mention the main combos that I use at lower percents to rack up damage on my opponent and then take advantage in the match. The one thing I really like to do is I really like to approach with Forder. This is because Hero's Forder reminds me a lot of Ike's from Brawl, which is a Forder that you can kind of just use against almost everyone. And it's a little bit different from Ike's in this game, but in general, it's like this forward slash that has a lot of range. And even if people block it from medium range, they can't really punish it that well. So it's a move that you can consistently use to outspace your opponent. So if you're landing in neutral, you're most likely and more often than not going to land using forward. You can mix up your opponent with neutral as you're falling down simply because neutral comes in a different arc and a different angle. So then your opponent can also get tricked because of the timing of that. But generally, you're going to be using forward a lot. Now, what we're going to do is that once you land forward, you want to actually push forward as you're landing the forward. This is because if you land away from the forward, you actually lose the opportunity to combo. As you can see, there's zero suit is a little bit too far from me to actually do anything about. But if I push forward as I'm doing it, then I remain right next to zero suit and then I can actually combo off of it. So what we want to do is that we want to land forwarder and then immediately we have a couple options. So we can do forwarder into jab. Even works, even if you don't perfectly space yourself, you can still hit a little bit of the sword. And one of the best things about this combo is that it actually pushes people into the ground like this. So then you can run up to them and then you can do a tech chase off of it, which gives you a potential for more damage. Another thing you can do, which is very popular, I think, is that you want to do down tilt right after the forwarder, which is actually works really well. And then you lift your opponent like that. After that, you have a couple options. I don't really know of any true combo options that we can do necessarily off of that. But a couple options that you can do is that you can, for example, after the down tilt, you can charge your side B. And if they don't immediately get out of the way, then you can do that. If you have a fully charged neutral B, you can do it right off of that as well. So if your opponent lands carelessly into it, then they can take a whole lot of damage like that. So you definitely have a couple mix of options. And if you think your opponent is going to air dodge off of it, you can also always just charge a horse smash. And then that's also a lot of damage. You can even, for example, do a command menu right after this. And then depending on what you get, it may be really good. For example, there I got something really good and probably would have hit it in a real match because no one really expects me to just go for it. The point being is that down tilt allows you to set up either a command menu play, a force smash, or anything. I don't really know of ways where we can make a true combo off of the down tilt. I've tested a whole bunch of ways, but as far as I know, these are like the couple options that I've been using that have been working really well. Another move that I recommend using is neutraler. Now, neutraler lifts the opponent up a little bit. It's actually very similar to Ike's neutraler, except the higher percents, you don't get that nice angle that Ike does get and the stun, which you get a free hit. So we're not really going to be getting kill confirms off of it like I does. But what we can do is at a lower percentage, we can actually do some combos over it. So for example, you can land neutraler and then you can run up and jab. But probably my favorite thing to do is after I land neutraler, you can actually go for a run up till and then you can either do two up tills like that. But you can also just, for example, after the up till, you can do a neutraler like that because neutraler hits from uh, right above the hero. And it actually, even though I will say it doesn't come out as instantly as upper, it still comes out really quick. It's a good way to finish off the combo if someone's above you. So that's a pretty easy way to at least get an edge card. It also depends on what you want. Like, for example, if you want a pure juggle, then I recommend going for two up tilts simply because the opponent will be right above you. But if you want to set up an edge guard, then neutral it will send them off to the right. So that's better for that. Another topic that people have been discussing is the fact that upper while landing can also net you some combos. So for example, if you're in a scenario where you're right next to your opponent or right behind them, you can always just land with an upper right into them. And that will give you some combos. For example, you can do like upper up smash. But I I'll feel like I feel like opposite is the most consistent option you can do out of this. It just kind of just works. Even if they DI behind you or in front of you, the up to will hit no matter what. It's probably your most consistent option. And it gets a juggle off of it, so I recommend up to probably the most. If you see your opponent DI is straight up in front of you, or above you, I will say, then up smash is a good option. But it only really works if my opponent's right on top of me, which makes, then again, up to probably the best option. You can also do a second upper if you're fast enough. But that's pretty technical, I will say, because like 
you have to like jump upper after the second upper and then you have to fast fall immediately so it's like like for example i did fast fall there that's not fast enough like that so that's a pretty interesting combo that you can do. You can also finish it off with something different, like a neutral air. Hero's Doubter is also very notable because, like, you actually get combos off of it. So, like, for example, if you get the spike, you can actually, for example, get a grab off of it. You can also get a jab. And you can even get an up tilt as well. So landing with down air actually is pretty reliable. And you can actually do some kill combos off of it. I am doing these combos against a computer that is not moving. So these combos are going to be more difficult to perform on real humans. But, for example, someone's at 60% and you do a downer, you actually get an up smash off of it. And if you get a crit off of this, well, then they're just, they're just dead. And another interesting thing is that sometimes, depending on the weight of the character and how fast they fall, sometimes you get the charges a little bit more. So characters like Zerus or Fox, you get extra charge time. At lower percents, though, you're mainly going to be going for, I will say, jab, grab, or up till. Any of those options will give you some pretty good options out of it. Now, in terms of grab combos, I've been a big fan of down throw here. Down throw actually into forder is a combo that not really many people can dodge at all and although the training counter doesn't really count it as a combo um i've been able to perform down for forder kind of consistently in a lot of top players and usually it works around the window of like five to thirty percent maybe a little bit lower generally what i like to do is i align with a forder get a grab and then down through into another forder and then there's not much they can really do about it um down through forder seems to be pretty consistent here and then you can also do up throw neutral air or you can do up throw upper they can di de this away but that's why neutral is a good option here because it covers both left and right making it easy for example you can just preemptively neutral air away like this and then it can still cover neutral di and back di you can cover two out of three options consistently he's making it pretty good in terms of his other throws back throw is just positional advantage and then fourth throw is the same way you can kind of get some uh tech chase off of it like for example Fourth throw there works out pretty well for that. Now, in terms of jab locks, you have a couple options here that I feel like are worth discussing. Downer is probably your strongest one here because it does a whole lot of damage and you can pretty much knock out your opponent right after it. So, for example, that's a very lethal combo that you can do off of this. So, like, you get the fully charged neutral B, and for some reason, your opponent misses the tech right next to you. You down there and then you do neutral B and that is absolutely lethal. That will do a tremendous amount of damage. So using down there to lock up your opponent only really works at lower percents. A higher percents are going to bounce off of it. Now let's take a look at the special. So neutral B honestly is one of your main options in neutral. You're going to be using this move a lot because it's just absolutely ridiculous. Not only does the uncharged version kills, like I've been able to kill people with this projectile pretty consistently because it sends people pretty far. Like at 80%, they're going to go really far. And the fully charged version is killing people at 60 to 70%. So what I like to do is pretty much at all points in time, I'm going to be using movement with neutral B. And you can also be reverse it to give yourself more mobility. So like there's a lot of scenarios where you want to be charging the neutral B and then you can cancel this into an air dodge for more mobility. You can also just jump off of it. So there's a whole lot of ways where this gives you mobility options. Like, for example, you can jump one way, reverse it, jump the other way, reverse it again. And then you can just pretty much be swinging around in the air. So this gives here a lot of area mobility, a lot of options. There's a lot of very different ways that you can trick people. For example, I can jump behind someone, cancel it, jump behind and then up order. Like there's a lot of ways where I can just cancel this movement and then give myself the advantage by just tricking the opponent. So neutral B, weight bounces, reverses, and cancels are going to be some of your best friends, I will say, with movement. So you definitely want to get on that. And now in terms of how to use the action projectile, what I recommend doing is that you kind of just charge the projectile at, at all points in time that you can. Because even if you don't have enough MP to use it, um, it doesn't cost any MP to actually charge it. And because MP recovers with attacks and also just waiting around, it's pretty much good to have it at all times. If you want to just uh, produce pressure, then I recommend just shooting the second variation here because the second variation travels pretty much across the entire stage. You don't really have to charge it very much to get very far. As you can see, it travels quite basically the entire stage. Now, one thing that you need to know is that if you want the second variation, you want to charge it slightly. It's like a split second. You don't have to actually wait for him to really like get into it. You know how he does the sound effect that like he's charging it? And he starts making this like sound with the projectile like this. You don't have to wait till it's almost done for you to release the second version. You can actually just wait a split second. And if you want the weaker version, 
then you can just mash it now this projectile right here the strong version is absolutely ridiculous it does a decent amount of shield damage the way this projectile is crazy is because it does a whole 30 something damage and it kills very early now how do we use this projectile what you have to understand about when you have a strong projectiles like this is that people are generally going to jump above you so you have to make sure to be ready to do a jump version of this to catch people jumping trying to avoid it and also when people start being afraid of the projectiles then you start going for grabs that's when you start going for down throw into forward air or up to the up air like i explained before as long as you have the projectile you can scare people into not actually being able to deal with it it's kind of like you trick the opponent into being scared of the projectile and then you cover the rest now one way i really like to use the projectile is that i like to weaken my opponent's shield i'm going to hit zero so first now when they have a weaker amount of shield then i'll use the neutral b because even if they spot dodge it the hitbox is so big and lasts for such a long time it's actually really hard to spot dodge and it will be it will do enough damage to break their shield and hero's force smash is so strong that a fully charged one will usually kill people at 40 at the ledge or at 50. so in general look out for you know lower shield and if people stay on their shield too much then you start going for grabs or at least for jump attempts to throw the projectiles that's the way i recommend using it you can also use it when people land like like for example you know how like you have this angle where like someone may land in front of you like they just they're from a juggling position they're going to land in front of you but you don't know how to deal with it i recommend shooting it right as they're about to land so like right there because they will have to jump above the projectile so and then you will have an advantage because if they don't have a second jump and then you hit them it'll be much easier to hit them for good off the level and then you can take a whole stock off of it so that's a really good advantage to be able to push uh, a second jump or force a second jump so i recommend using it that way as well now side b is a very interesting case so if you tap side b you have a decent amount of range and it does a good amount of damage as well it doesn't necessarily kill but what i like to do with this move that not a lot of people talk about is i like to edge guard with this move like that because it actually puts people in a very uncomfortable range so like i will back throw someone jump off the level and then do that really quick you can also just trick people with it so for example let's say someone expects you to do that and you can just jump back on the level and then you can do the charge operation like this is just an example of how like you can use these different moves like you can either jump off the level and do it you can either jump and charge the, the other version you can also do like the strong version because the strong version of this move has super armor like once you are doing the actual slash even if they hit you you will go through the attack and hit them anyway so you can for example do this to edge guard some recovery that you feel is difficult to deal with for example maybe donkey kongs or bowsers or any other recovery that is kind of linear that has a hitbox or you can snipe them off with the quick one or even if you have more time you can charge it slightly and then get them with a the long range one so I feel like side B is not only good at neutral, but also really good at edge guarding specifically. Now, in terms of neutral, I recommend always going for the second version. It basically takes a split second to charge. Like, you don't have to actually charge it that much. Like, like it literally takes probably less than a split second, to be honest. But regardless, it has so much range that you can just pretty much always be a neutral here. And then you can constantly threaten your opponent to block here. The only problem with this move is that it does use quite a bit of MP. So if you use, if you simply just spam it mindlessly, then you will be punished. And if you use the fully charged of variation it does cause a lot of mp as well so you have to be careful with that but regardless you should be using this move pretty constantly if you combine this move with neutral b and side b hero becomes quickly one of the most annoying zoners in the entire game the way i like to play neutral with him is that obviously i like to forward it a lot but i like to run up to a lot because this is one of the best anti arrows in my opinion in the game like this range of up till is just amazing it's kind of like links up till where it just kind of covers everything and then I like to run jab because jab has a lot of range. I like to do jab one and two like this because it covers a whole run, lot of range. And you can also delay it. You can do it slowly. You can do it fast. And then if someone is in a range where like you're not too sure what they're going to do, you can always just run up and jab. And they can't really punish you even if they block it. Like, for example, if Zero Soup wasn't Zero Soup and it was another character that had like a normal grab, if I did something like this on their shield, they will not be able to shield grab it. Zero Soup can because she has range. But she's also slower from the grab. So regardless, you can put some pressure with the jab, which is what I like to do. Now, let's talk about down B. Now, down B is quite crazy. I think the best thing you have to understand is that when you pull the menu, you can move slightly. However, if you move, it will quickly go away. Now, one thing you have to understand when you pull out the menu is that if you jump or move away from it, uh, the menu will quickly disappear away. The other thing is that if you press up, you will go completely down. So if you have an option that it's at the fourth slot you don't have to necessarily press down down to catch it whereas you can just press up and you can immediately go up to it you can cancel the menu by either blocking by pressing b and obviously doing a command <laughs> can't be casted <laughs> and ultimately you can also just jump 
if you're in the air you can also air dodge and it will do the same thing generally though you're going to probably be canceling with jump or with shield and neutral another very interesting thing that i don't see people talk about is the fact that you can actually roll out of it now if you're in a scenario where you are pulling up the menu you actually can roll out of it people don't talk about this because you when you uh press block to cancel the menu if you then press left or right the game actually delays you a little bit to roll whereas if you actually tap the button of block and then you tap left and right to cancel the shield into a roll uh then you can just immediately do a roll without actually ever putting the shield in motion you, the game just kind of just rolls your way to the scenario which i'm actually a big fan of so this is a really interesting thing that i think people should do definitely with menu because rolling is such a good option to just kind of just get behind someone and then go from there just remember just tap the shield button and then press left or right now moving on to the actual specials first of all we have a million options i'm going to quickly tell you how i use every option uh, on a surface level because there's so many moves that we could be here on a one hour long video and talk about all of them but it's just so you understand all right regardless uh zoom is an option that pretty much a jail out of free card uh, option like if you're ever in a bad spot off the level i always recommend just like looking at the menu and if you have zoom then you use it real quick like that it will pretty much get you out of any bad scenario whether it be a juggle whether it be off the stage all you have to do and understand is that once you pull up the menu you will probably have to air dodge and then you can move again or you will have to jump off of it another thing i like to do is that if i'm off the level trying to pull up the menu is that you can air dodge into the ledge like this so then it's not nearly as risky but i'm like air dodging like this and then recovering you can just air dodge into the ledge as usual regardless one thing to know about zoom is that you can actually jump up of zoom um you can air dodge up of zoom and you can move pretty much all the way like right as you're near the top of the screen you can actually just start moving again so you don't have to wait till you're all the way down so you actually have a lot of options to uh make zoom even more safer you can use mix-ups when neutral b jump up b air dodge whatever now there's a lot of projectiles that hero has for example he has kaboom he has sizzle there's a whole lot of screen wide projectiles that you can see what i recommend is that you learn the names of these projectiles for example kaboom and sizzle are two projectiles that you can pretty much just pick uh at any point in time and if you see them in the menu um then i recommend just using them straight above because it's such a quick move that it just comes out instantly and if your opponent gets caught they take a whole bunch of damage for example ziz is on the same on the same level as that zizzle and then snooze is also a pretty similar one a snooze works a little bit different it has less range and it can actually put people to sleep in the air and in the ground people can however block this move what i recommend though is that you use this move as a less trap option so for example when someone's at the ledge and you're not sure what they're going to do from the ledge they're actually very vulnerable to snooze because snooze will go through the ledge it will cover normal get up regular get up and it will cover jump from the ledge and they will fall asleep on the ground and if you obviously if you fall asleep in the air you can then chase them and down there or maybe set up some kind of edge guard or you can if they fall asleep on stage you can just charge a force mesh and you're probably going to die very early so snooze very good to cover the ledge now accelerate accelerate is actually really hard for me to say very similar to shulk's jump monado art it doesn't last very long though it's this is actually probably one of my least favorite moves because i don't like the fact that when hero starts jumping none of his arrows are really that good from jump like backer is pretty slow and neutral it doesn't have that much range so when i'm just jumping around like crazy like that i don't actually feel that comfortable it's only really good if you want to avoid combat but to actively engage i'm not a fan of accelerate i feel like it's really good if you need to run the clock or just strictly recover now hatchet man straight up just destroys your shield in one hit so if you're ever in a scenario where someone is blocking or you expect them to block for example from the ledge someone gets up and then they just block and you have hatchet man then it's an option that you can use to trick your opponent you have to be mindful though that people are going to be reading your menu so if you make it too obvious that you're going to pick an option you can always just circle back up and down like this and then pick an option and then it will make it harder for people to like actually see what you're doing for psych up and oomph they work a little bit differently but they both accomplish the effect that your moves are going to be power up so oomph specifically increases attack power for 12 seconds and then psych up increases power of the next attack Regardless, if you see them come up on the menu, you should have the mindset that, hey, next thing I land is going to be strong, so maybe we should do that. One thing to be mindful of is the fact that Oomph is actually really strong on shield. So, like, if someone is blocking like this and then you force mesh, it will actually break their shield because it does so much shield damage. So, that's actually a very good strategy. If I see someone just blocking around while I have Oomph, you just catch them off with an up with a force mesh and then you can break their shield and that's pretty much stock. Now, Flame Slash and Kakrako Slash. I'm sorry if I pronounced it wrong. Uh, it's pretty much a fire slash and an ice slash. 
the way i like to use these moves is that when i'm at the ledge these moves actually have a lot of range that it's pretty safe to just pull them up from this range roughly and then if they get up from the ledge in any capacity i can just pretty much on reaction press these moves and crackle slash is actually pretty uh pretty dangerous at the ledge simply because when they get frozen they actually go off the level and if they don't mash out or they're a pretty high percent they can actually just die probably the last very important thing to mention is bounce is one of your best things to do in zoning matchups because as long as you have this up every projector you get hit will be reflected and you don't have to do anything about it so you can just fight so this is obviously very good against samus duck hunt pretty much any character that uses projectiles you can use bounce snake for example now twack is a very dangerous move that i just did just now Twack has a pretty much a percentage to just automatically kill you. What you have to understand is that as they sit in the presentation, the higher the percentage the opponent has, the more likely they are to die to Twack. So for example, they can die at zero, but it's incredibly unlikely. Finally, one of the last options I want to talk about, probably the last one actually, is Hocus Pocus. Now, Hocus Pocus is really hard for me to get in the menu. And I don't know why, if it's just me, but every time I try to find this option in the menu, it's almost never there. Just so you know, Hocus Pocus has the option to do literally one of like 20 something things. It can, a, any of them can happen at any point in time. It's an extreme RNG dice that you're pretty much using when you use this move. What I recommend doing is that you only really want to use Hocus Pocus if you feel like taking a risk, if you're losing and you need maybe an option to come back, it should really only be like a last resort type of thing that you're going to be doing. Because while you may, for example, get something that can win you the game, because sometimes you may get power ups, you may become big, you may become invisible, a whole bunch of stuff. You get a bunch of different item effects, pretty much. You can also just put yourself to sleep or pretty much lose control of your own character. And then you can just pretty much give and hand the W to your opponent. So you have to be very careful. Magic Burst is one of the best things that you can do in general. Now, the thing that you have to understand is that as I did it a moment ago, this option covers completely under the ledge. So it's actually very, 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 very broken at the ledge. So for example, if someone's coming back from the ledge trying to recover or trying to get back through you, use it Magic Burst not only can catch them before they grab the ledge, but it's just extremely hard to deal with at the ledge. There's not much you can do and it will kill you extremely early. It's actually one of the very best things you can do out of the command line for sure. Now, Kamikaze, you, it actually has a ridiculous range, and it's actually really easy to catch someone if they're around you. But the problem with Kamikaze is that you obviously take down an entire stock of yours. What I recommend is that if you see that your opponent like a 50 plus percent, and you are like a one something, and you see Kamikaze, I say just go for it. Because you already are winning, and you're about to die, so might as well have a chance of taking an entire stock of your opponent while you're at it. So it actually is pretty good, especially around the ledge, or where someone's landing, or recovering. Kaklang is a really weird option. It turns you into metal. Actually, if you use it in the air, it has a hitbox while you're falling down. You fall down immediately. But this is also one of those weird options that you're rarely going to use. It's basically used in the air because you will fall down to the ground and no one can hurt you. So you can land for free. And for example, I've been trying to pull off Hocus Pocus this entire time and I haven't even seen it once in the mini. Oh, there it is. As you can see, Hocus Pocus can do anything. For example, it can give you self-toxic. It can also give you magic burst. It can give you a flaming sword slash. It can reflect projectiles as well. It can inflict the, the, the flower hat poison. It can give you speed. It can make you, uh, you know, take like a super mushroom. It can it can do literally like 25 different things. And it's honestly just, it, it, it's, it's such a ridiculous thing to use. It, it's pretty much a move that you really are mostly going to use to troll. And that's pretty much my how to play hero here. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and it helped you guys improve with a hero. Let me know if you guys have any questions in the comments down below. And with that said, best of luck making everybody mad <laughs> on Elite Smash with a hero. This guy is really fun. I'm having a lot of fun with him. And I hope you guys also have fun with him. Hopefully this video was helpful. With that said, guys, thank you so much for watching. And I'll see all of you guys around in another video. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.